Hi there, it's David Williams, and I want to talk to you today about resistors and AC circuits. Now, if we're looking at purely resistive circuits, the behavior, when I talk about behavior, I mean the, the relationship between voltage and current is pretty much the same in an AC circuit as it is in a DC circuit. The only difference being that the voltage is obviously not constant and the current is therefore also, also not constant. But instead of talking about some DC, uh, constant DC value, we're going to just look at what the the peak amplitude is. Either that's the the amplitude from 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 some center reference to the the maximum, or maybe from the maximum to the minimum. What voltage is that? Or maybe even the the RMS voltage. And if we use that as just our our one voltage, then we can pretty much do calculations to figure out voltages and currents the same way as we do in in DC circuits. So all the laws that hold true when you looking at AC circuits, we still have Ohm's law. So Ohm, we still have Ohm's law, and that's the relationship between voltage and current. You know, voltage is equal to current times resistance. That was in DC, but then if we look at AC, as if we talk about the peak voltage and the peak current, then this, this rule will hold true. Or instead of the peak, we talk about the peak to peak voltage and current and the peak to peak yeah peak to peak voltage and the peak to peak current and this law holds true or even if we look at RMS voltage and RMS current or really anywhere that you want to look at what the voltage is at any snapshot any point in time uh, the relationship between voltage and current will still hold true for Ohm's law for Joule's law Joule's law also holds true Power is equal to voltage times current. The only thing that we have to pay attention to here is that we have to talk about RMS voltage and RMS current, and this is going to be the average power dissipated by that resistor. Uh, and, and actually, if you look at any point in time, this is also going to be true if you say look at the peak the peak power at that snapshot in time when the voltage is at its peak and when the current is at its peak Joule's law will also hold true for that instant in time. Um, a couple other things that will hold true Kirchhoff's voltage laws so that means any uh, go around a complete loop in a circuit and the sum of the sources is going to equal the sum of the of the drops so if we have a simple circuit like this the voltage from the source is going to be equal to the voltage dropped by the by the resistor and also Kirchhoff's current laws hold true current, Kirchhoff's current law holds true so if we have a branch like this the current into the branch is going to be equal to the currents the sum of the currents out of the branch call that I1, I2 and I3 I1 is equal to I2 plus I, oops, and lowercase i, lowercase i3. So all these things hold true for both DC and AC circuits. We just have to pay attention to, to a few little minor details, make sure we're talking, we know which voltages and currents we're talking about. Now I want to look at one simple example here. Um, so we have an AC voltage source. So this AC voltage source is going to be producing a voltage, sinusoidal voltage, that looks something like this. So here's a graph of voltage and time, and let's say the value at the peak there is 3 volts, and the value at that particular point in time is 1 millisecond. So what we have is we've got a 3 volt peak sinusoidal signal with a period, period of 1 millisecond, which also means a frequency of 1 kilohertz. So if we were to Look at an equation for what this sinusoidal signal looks like is going to be 3 sine 2 pi times 1000 T. So the, the voltage depends on the, the point the voltage at any particular point in time depends on what time what, what the time is. So this is in volts. Okay, I'm just going to erase this so I've got room to draw my circuit. And we're going to focus on this being a 3 volt peak signal so I'm going to designate that on my my AC source here this is an AC source 3 volt peak 
and it's this 3 volt peak signal is connected to a simple circuit here. And let's say we want to try to figure out what is the current here. And we've got a 1 ohm resistor, a 2 ohm resistor, and let's say another 2 ohm resistor. So in order to figure out what the current is here, well, since we're dealing with peak voltage here, we'll deal with peak current. So current is equal to volts voltage divided by resistance and in this case the total resistance that's that, that this source sees is and that we can figure that out total resistance is going to be 1 ohm plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 and then take the inverse of that so this is the parallel combination of those 2 ohm resistors in series with that 1 ohm resistor works out to 2 ohms so the peak current maybe I should write that there peak current and peak voltage is equal to 3 volts over 2 ohms equals 1.5 amps. So peak current is 1.5 amps and if we were to plot that along with the the voltage here, so we're on the same, same time scale but obviously we're plotting two different units so we've got a plot of 3 volts here and our current would look pretty much the same shape just with a different amplitude and we're measuring a different thing so that peak right there the value right there would be 1.5 amps so voltage reach, voltage and current reach the positive peak at the same time they cross zero at the same time and they reach the negative peak at the same time so hopefully you learned a little bit about resistors and AC circuits and I'll see you in the next video